Hi everyone, today we have Maria Luisa with us. How are you doing, Maria? I'm great. I'm so excited for the podcast. Great. So today is our Thursday talk with Competitive College. And for those who don't know Maria, she's an intern with us for our 369 Connect team. So, Maria, how do you how has been your journey with Competech or 369 Connect as an intern? Well, it's been a long journey and uh okay, I always started my journey in Canada. Mm-hmm. So okay, I always started way back than Canada. Okay, I went to Australia for six months mm-hmm. and then I was my first abroad experience mm-hmm. and it was so exciting. And then um I stayed six months in Australia mm-hmm. and then I went back to Brazil mm-hmm. and then um I have my boyfriend, which is now my husband, and he told me, oh, maybe we should go to Canada. I went to Canada when I was, my husband was saying that he was in Canada when he was 13 years old, Oh, like so young, and he had all the great picture of Canada, Canada is awesome, I want (laughs) to go back there, and then uh, he was always pitching me the idea of coming to Canada. Then, okay, Mm. maybe you can go to Canada. Then I started to research a lot of things about Canada. It's a so nice. This all happened when you were in Brazil or when you were in Australia? In Australia mm-hmm. and Brazil. So my husband, I think he was pitching the idea of Canada. It's been um, for two years. Oh. <laughs> for two years. I know. I want to go to Europe. Uh, you know, I always had Europe in mind. Mm-hmm. But he was so drawn uh, in Canada that mm-hmm. I thought, oh, maybe Canada is a good idea. Mm-hmm. Then uh Okay, let's go to Canada. That's that's my journey to come to Canada. Then I started to do a lot of things in terms of volunteering in Canada. Okay. So I first started... Am I talking too much? No. <laughs> you know, go ahead. I mean, this is interesting to know. And I'm sure uh, most of the time people in Canada, uh, they, they hear about the student journey, they hear about the immigration, but there are very few people who would actually know the journey, you know, going from different countries and specifically there are a lot of students in North America and South America who probably do not understand the concept of or do not know the different process involved, how they come here as a student and then probably how they get the exposure as an in, uh, you know, as an intern or how do they apply for jobs. So I think you are the perfect example. You can keep talking. I love <laughs> to see you talking. So don't worry on that. Please continue. Like, oh. I know that you mentioned to me, like when we we're having our initial chats that you've been to a couple of countries and that's how you came to Canada as a student. Yes. Right. So, yeah, I mean, whatever you want to add in your student journey. Your husband was the reason. Now I know that. I didn't knew that before. So interesting fact. Yes. So uh, I, I like to be clear in terms of how oh, I came to Canada because of uh, my husband's ideas at first. Mm-hmm. But now, uh, just to make it clear, I'm totally happy in Canada now. But the idea of Canada was never in my mind before. Okay. But then, okay, Canada is nice. Let's go to Canada because I like planning my life, but mm-hmm. I don't like planning that much that I stay fixed in one idea. Oh, that's so, interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a, go as it comes, you know, like take the life as it goes. Yeah, so. Not too much, but yes, <laughs> like a good balance between planning and um, not planning. It, it's good for me. It, okay. it helps me to get new opportunities and to be open to learn different things. Right, right. But then when uh, we select, Canada then we start the journey of how uh, are we going to Canada Mm -hmm. we first thought maybe we can go as PRs because it's better yes this is one of the important phases that most of the people go through like like you know that this is a country you have to go but what are the different ways you can reach there so I think that's one of the important discussion probably we're going to listen now from Maria yeah and then we'll uh, yes and for example we listed um two ways of coming to Canada Mm -hmm. which the first one is a PR because um once you land in Canada as a PR, you have access to um, the uh, OHIP. For those who doesn't know, is the um, Ontario Health Insurance Plan, the yes. health benefits, basically. Exactly. So you have access to you always. For for example, the tuition fee for university is cheaper when you come as a PR. So it's the best way in terms of affordability. Mm-hmm. Then we um well. My husband started to study French mm-hmm. uh, when we selected the PR. And unfortunately, I don't know, maybe he would be uh, a bit shy now that I mentioned this, but he didn't succeed in the test. <laughs> <laughs> he studied French for uh, two years. Okay. And uh, he, got, uh, he didn't get the grade that he needed. Okay. okay. So, okay, maybe we can't go as a PR okay. because of my husband's uh, French test. Oh, poor guy, I, I shouldn't be talking this. 
in oh. the <laughs> podcast but anyway i'm hoping you'll be listening to us soon <laughs> yes but, but uh, that brings to me one question i'm so sorry to interrupt you there maria but is uh, was in fact french language was a mandatory requirement for you to apply from brazil to canada as in pr it's not but uh considering our uh work experiences and um mm-hmm. our educational background mm-hmm. if we got a certain amount of points in french language um i think it's a b2 okay level of french okay. we could get 30 extra points oh wow that's so, that's new to me i never knew that okay yes this is really interesting for those who know french and mm-hmm. uh, are interested in um coming to canada as a pr right right yeah but unfortunately we didn't get it <laughs> but uh yes you can when you are bilingual which means um a good level of english and french mm-hmm. you get 30 extra points in the express entry oh wow yeah. that's nice and express entry is the shortest or the fastest way to apply for an immigration through as in pr right yes yes yes, yes. it's a program that uh, the canadian government has right. so it's um it's a um, system of points mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you just punctuation punctuation and uh, slightly increase in your punctuation pu- sorry in your points yes yes then you can get uh, the pr yes yes but unfortunately we didn't get it mm-hmm. so our second choice was the study permit then right. we selected a study permit and then we started the research about who should we go should mm-hmm. we go to toronto should we go to vancouver should we go to um quebec should we go to where where in canada yes it's it's a, a big country right yes yes so i applied for um, alberta mm-hmm. and also for um i applied for some college in alberta mm-hmm. and all uh, in ontario mm-hmm. at the same time and i was selected in alberta and uh, ontario okay. more specific toronto where we are now okay then we uh, we were asking ourselves where should we go because oh you you got the acceptance from both the co- colleges from both the places both the provinces yes oh wow that's great so i didn't know where i should go mm-hmm. then i had select oh, because when you are abroad you don't know about how is how is that place I, is it nice yes yes uh, how is the employment rate yes. is it good is it too cold because this is a question we should ask ourselves when we come to canada is right. it too cold yeah uh, is the winter too <laughs> terrible yes yes that that's probably mm-hmm. was uh, on one of my top list like how cold is the province you know exactly. short list that's true and uh, when we saw uh, alberta's mm-hmm. um temperature Uh, throughout the years <laughs> i changed my mind toronto it is yeah <laughs> and then we are here we are in toronto yeah so i'm here as an international student how long you've been here in toronto now as a student four months oh four, wow four months, yes. wow months. so how and you've been here in the winters now almost we are about to finish the winter but you landed here in winters Every, i was told that we are in spring But for me it's winter now. <laughs> it's it's not spring. Spring I should be worn like uh t-shirts. No, I'm wearing a jacket when I go outside. So no. I believe you when I say that and I also come from a country which is warm India, right? They're also like when you say it's March, April, May, it's actually the summers, not even the spring, right? Yes. So I am craving for that summer to be there too. So <laughs> I can totally understand your feeling there. I can't wait for summer. Yes, but please for those who are listening to us, Toronto is great and um you know all the temperatures are you get used to it. So come to Toronto. But um but yes, then how um So you came was, here as a student in January almost, close yes. to January. Okay, okay. Exactly. And uh when I selected um Toronto, mm-hmm. then I started to do some volunteer work. Okay. This is the beginning of the story with uh Computech. Oh, and okay. 369 Global. So that, how did you got into 369 Connect and Computech family? That and, journey from there, right? This is a fun story. Kumara is the one that he's going to listen to this, I think. <laughs> I hope. And uh he'll get relate to how we started mm-hmm. um my internship in my in 369 Global. We're I'm about. waiting to hear this story from quite a long time now. I I know that you told me a couple of times that it's an interesting one. So yes, it's actually quite random because 
Um, I started my volunteer work um, at the Federation of Canadian Resident Businesses, okay. FCBB. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started there as a business development. Okay. And we have a WhatsApp group where everyone shares the job opportunities. Mm-hmm. And on, one of the volunteers, which is um, my colleague at FCBB, mm-hmm. she shared um, Swiss 69 Connect um, job op- internship opportunity. Yes. Okay. And I messaged her. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm in, I'm coming to Canada. It's pretty interesting. I have a background in marketing, so it it seems so nice. Oh, so this all happened when you were still in Brazil. Yes. Like, oh, wow, wow, wow. That's interesting. Okay. It's it's uh it's awesome. <laughs> I tell everyone, and everyone gets oh wow, how come? But um, yes, then I message her, uh-huh. and she said, oh maybe I'll speak with Kumara. Okay, who is this guy? Who is he? Okay. <laughs> now you know who this guy is. <laughs> yes. And then I, I went to LinkedIn. Okay, this is Komaro. Okay, let's let's uh, send him a request and to connect. Mm-hmm. And then he said, okay, uh, let's schedule a Zoom call. And I got, why? <laughs> you don't know me, but okay. People maybe are a little bit different in Canada. And uh, it was so nice. Then um, I got to know Komaro. Oh, in, so you uh, had a Zoom call when you were in Brazil before you coming to Canada. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. So that's how networking works probably. Again, like I think in one of my previous podcasts, I was talking to one of my colleagues where she mentioned she also got a lot of things done by just connecting to people. So I think this is one of the takeaways that if you're coming to Canada, let's be sure to connect to people. You never know when you're going to get an opportunity. Right? And Yes, and to be open to connect with people. I think mm-hmm. it's the tip that I would give people. It's like sometimes it's not the most uh, rational or um, it's not a path that it's a, it's for you. You should build your path and you should decide because Canada is so open, mm-hmm. not just open in terms of culture, um, Culturally, diversity, but yeah. diversity, but it's open in terms of opportunities. Mm-hmm. So something that I would never do in Brazil, for example, like connecting randomly, it's it's not something that we do. At least I I I wasn't doing to be <laughs> honest. So I don't think it's a cultural thing in Brazil. But in Canada, it's normal. You should yeah. connect. The network in Canada it's so important. So and I can I can tell it is because I got my internship um, given the network. Yeah, effort. and right before you landed here, you know, like you tried for it. I mean, it's not that it just came to you. You connected to people and you tried reaching out to Kumran and uh, it's good that you were interviewed. You had that Zoom call set up and things. Now we have Maria here. Now here we are. <laughs> and then um, when I connected with uh, Kumran, then we started to... Actually, he wanted. He was interested in FCBB services. Okay. And then... Um, I connected uh, 36 and connect with the uh, FCBB. Mm-hmm. And then we spoke for maybe two months. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know the timeline. But w- we spoke and come um, on. Okay, you seem, you, you are nice. Do you want to work with us? Do you want, maybe you should apply for the um, rotational internship. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, I'll apply to it. Thank you. And then I applied. And then, okay. You are nice. You can maybe you can um, you can work with us, and I accepted. I'm sure he didn't just send the yes to you just because you're nice. You're nice for no, sure. No, yes, but yeah, we know that you have that skills which we were looking forward to as an intern. Yes, so. yes, because uh, this is really important because I work with um, Kumaro as a uh, business development. So we met professionally mm-hmm. when I was working as a business development. So I could um, he met me. In um, no, nah, I will. I was working in a position that I I want to work in the future. Mm-hmm. So he knew how I worked. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So uh, I applied, and he knew my uh, my role in FCB. He know he know he knew that I could work in um, S three six nine connect. Mm-hmm. And then oh okay, do, do you wanna work? with us yeah yeah i i do yay excited yes <laughs> great so finally good yes but and then you came back to i mean you came to canada probably in jan and then you joined us and uh, so how has been this journey going forward like i know you're still an intern with us but uh, i think we will always looking forward to ask like how does it feels like to be an intern here and right away getting a job op- not i would not say a job opportunity but an opportunity to work and learn 
while you're still new like there are so many newcomers and students you know who initially struggle like we uh, at our college we see so many students who come here as newcomers who come here as students uh, international students but but they lack an opportunity to work somewhere right so what do you have to say to those people maria like how do you think your experience probably may help them like if you want to share something on that sure um yes I- i'm so glad to share uh, my experience because mm-hmm. when i heard from people that have been through what i have been through i couldn't connect because i didn't understand what 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 they did what are the struggles struggles or even the, the tips why what did you do uh, oh, oh i just got it like this why why did you yes, not right? sometimes yeah. we see on linkedin or people with great roles and we ask ourselves how come how how can i get there because everyone seems everyone um always want to be oh i got this it's easy but no it's not easy, easy. Exactly. it's not i i i'm telling you happily <laughs> but actually it's it's not easy yes. i spent six months uh connecting volunteering and uh writing everyone that i could on linkedin mm-hmm. and i was something that i think that people should do as i could give a tip and uh, i if i could help i would say connect and ask questions mm-hmm. ask uh how is canada um right. how can i how can i prepare to canada because Once you land here as an international student, you have to adapt culturally. Yes. You have to learn everything in terms of how I how do I go to the supermarket? Yes. <laughs> so this... true. How I cross the road, you know? Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> those are like so such a small things, but you 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 actually face it on a day to day basis, right? So yes, and you have so many things to do, and uh, I think I can tell that. Even though I'm in Canada for four months, mm-hmm. I, I've been working towards Canada for a year and a half. So I I haven't stopped. I landed in Canada, but I was I'm always how can I say working maybe, but yeah, yeah. always so how can I position myself in Canada? Yes. This is something that, um, whenever you come as a student, you should bear in mind. Yeah. So it's not something that. you thought that oh i'm going to canada and i'll start sh- my struggles or I'll start my hard work when i land in canada it was yes. like what i can do right now to make my future better probably in canada so is it networking is it connecting to people is it asking the questions so i think rightly said maria there uh, sometimes that's what i feel too like you know it's not what you can do in future it's what you can do right now to make things better in future right so you worked hard for it and you tried connecting to people you volunteered and you and your husband planned for it so i think planning and action probably has been the oh. two important things there yes planning action and i should say to everyone listen to this that i'm here because so many people helped me mm-hmm. so many people g- gave me little tips like oh maybe you should improve your resume in this way maybe mm. how because when you are overseas and you are going abroad you you doesn't you, you don't know how people think or you don't know the cultural nuances yes yes so when you have friends that i ha- as i had at fcbb that helped me to build my resume and to tell me um what it is expected from me mm-hmm. from the canadian perspective it helped me yes it yes. helped me to build my resume it helped me to be more secure mm-hmm. because sometimes you, you don't know how to nothing you don't know how to communicate with people you know the yes. language you you're know. just clueless sometimes yes right 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 and um yeah that's that's the <laughs> tips that i have i that's hope that's good that was yeah. good one planning act take action and ask yes. i mean asking is an important thing too right so, super important right good so now since you're here i mean as an intern how do you think being an intern is important and how that's going to benefit you oh it's it, for me um I don't know. I want to work as a. I don't know what I want to do. I think it's clear as I <laughs> just to connect what I said in the beginning of the podcast. Yes, yes. I don't have a plan for myself. I just. I actually I have a plan, mm-hmm. but it's not fixed enough. I just work around it. So, <laughs> I think I'm planning to work uh, in the business industry. Okay, that's something I like. I think that I add value to companies. 
mm-hmm. um because i like connecting and i like networking and i like these kind of things mm-hmm. but um Shika, I speak too much. Could you please repeat the question? <laughs> no, I was just asking. I love the way you talk. So I'm just listening to you now. Okay. <laughs> Then next time probably we will switch the positions and then you can ask questions. That's yes. good. No, I was just trying to understand like from a student perspective, like okay. lot many international students doesn't get an opportunity to have an internship. Or even if they get, probably they think let me rather apply for a full job and not go for an internship. Okay. So why do you think even having an internship opportunity or accepting it you know is important for a student how it's going to benefit in the future Okay so first uh, for me as an intern especially here uh, at 369 global I get the chance to rotate for, so I worked I started at 369 connect mm-hmm. then I I'm here um I'm now in Computech and also in 369 global and then I'll move to 369 global um in the end of my internship. So for me, I didn't know anything about the Canadian culture. Mm-hmm. In the, even in the workplace, I didn't know how, how should I behave. It's, it's yeah. all these small insecurities that I had. Um it's been helping me to get to know the Canadian expectations. Right. So I I'm this is a good question because I've been asking myself this uh, how did this internship has been helping me mm-hmm. to build my career in Canada but I can say that the internship is helping me to um understand the culture. I think it's more mm-hmm. understanding and getting to know mm-hmm. and adapting. It it's helping me to adapt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. More than if I had started in a full-time position. I can't because of my visa but right. let's say a full-time or a part-time position in a more not on an entry level mm-hmm. but something more mature i wouldn't have the experience right 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 of sharing of adapting of being flexible because here i can go from one department to another right since it's a, it's been great so it's been more about you just get to learn more when you probably are an intern than going on a work yes okay great great now i'll go with the feedback time <laughs> <laughs> So I believe interns are the ones who probably have an exposure and you had an exposure to a lot number of teams and you know with 369 connect then with sometimes with competitive it all being 369 and under 369 global. So how do you think the culture has been at Competech, you know? And I'm sure a lot many people probably a lot of international students who want to apply for an internship or for a job with us we do not know but probably feedbacks like this help student to decide, you know, like how do they think an intern would do and in an educational environment or sector or an industry or in a marketing industry like what are my um, how do you say what are my options which i can go forward with so this feedback is going to be an important one mark oh, okay. <laughs> no i first and just be honest yeah i mean yeah first and foremost people people at computech they will help you so much everyone Yay, is so friendly you know that because i've been here new too so i will have the same feeling so <laughs> you can um you can see but to build this set where we are now there has been five people and everyone is so friendly and i was nervous at the beginning of the podcast yeah yeah and now yeah. i feel so relaxed because everyone's so open and it's like to chat it's amazing to chat with mm-hmm. so everyone will teach you and you learn from they will ask you um how do you feel uh, comfortable you know this this little things so people share their experience with you right. they are willing to stop look into your eyes and explain to you things so for me computech it, it the people it's um the people yeah, i like it, the way you said the, the people <laughs> yeah yes exactly really short <laughs> uh people at computech are awesome and um it's always very friendly so i've been um in computech uh, specifically i've been working the international department mm-hmm. which has um have been uh, has been built yes and i've been work with uh, the day to day i've been work with abarna yes but um i get to know everyone at computech because i we have our events so <laughs> yes uh, the day event buster event yes so um i've been working in the international department but it's been it's been great for me because my background is international relations yeah so i've been practicing what i've learned in my bachelor so um 
it's for an intern to mm-hmm. practice what we've learned in theory is the most important factor. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's been great to practice not um, not just what I've I've learned in my bachelor's, but in Canada. This is uh, when I speak with my mom mm-hmm. in the video chat. The chat, I thought, Mom, I'm here in Canada working something international. Oh, I can't believe it. Uh, so I I just landed. Sometimes I I. I have never pictured myself in Canada in the moment. I have never pictured myself in Canada, period. But um, the way I am now, mm-hmm. working in international relations, this is this is awesome. And this is yeah, the result of your hard work, for sure. Right? Oh, so. thank you, Shika. <laughs> you are such a... Uh, yeah, that's so, so nice. Now, I, I really want to tell all of the uh, listeners that to Maria, I think I was just talking to her and I was just counting on my fingers how many languages she speaks. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so... <laughs> Maria, do you want to tell about your multilingual skills to the people? Yes. <laughs> so, as a Brazilian, my mother tongue is Portuguese. Yeah. And um, now I know I was approved by Diana, which is the marketing coordinator that I speak Spanish. So I can tell you that I speak Spanish. Um, I have, um, I speak French, but a little bit like, okay, I can speak, but not fluently Mm -hmm. in English. Yeah. So I mean, there is Portuguese, there's Spanish, there is French, there's English. Yes. Wow. This lady is a multilingual lady here. (laughs) And I'm sure we're going to have another one where probably you and Diana will have something oh, in Spanish. So I'll I practice my Spanish. So excited. <laughs> that will be an interesting one. Yes. So, do you have anything else probably you want to share with our viewers and specifically, you know, the international students? You're going to be the motivator for them probably with, you know, like, because I was talking to someone uh, and I don't think I've told many people here is that I was talking to one of my uh, cousin, nephew who has reached here last week. And he's an international student as well. So he he also had those feelings. And he had us at least because he's here. We are telling him this is how you do stuff. This is how you do not. But then he still had that feeling of nervousness. He didn't know. Like he knew that he's okay when he's with us. But if we ask him to go and get this done, probably he's really scared. And, you know, that's how probably most of the people come here. But with that scare, I mean, with that feeling that they do not know how things would be with that feeling they do not know whom to ask where to go and how to start with like where to start with right so i think uh, it's it's like probably stories like yours maria where people will get to know it's not only when you land here probably start your search right away when you're in your country devote your time there right connect to people but let's say top three things and these are my like I would say my favorite questions to ask people. Top three things which you will want to share with our viewers today. So, um, one, it's about, for example, for me, the volunteer was, was you need to do it. Because volunteering? Volunteering in an area that you wanted to work in, if it's oh. possible. Sometimes it's not. Right, right. If you are from the uh, business sector, mm-hmm. you can volunteer easily in yes. Canada. So volunteer because once you volunteer, you have access to a net- network. Right. So you can connect with people and ask questions. Right. right. And uh, second item would be ask questions. Just ask. People in Canada tend to be very open, mm-hmm. and uh, they tend to answer your questions. So go to LinkedIn. Just go there and ask random keep questions. Keep asking. Keep asking. Right? Keep asking questions like. Um, how is Canada? Right. How is the workplace in Canada? What What's the weather? How is the weather in Canada? What do you wear in a cold day? Because I was curious. About, I was really curious about what do you wear in a minus twenty degrees? Yes, you know yes. these little things that um, then you start connecting with the country and the culture. Mm-hmm. And top three, <laughs> maybe. Starting entry level positions, don't I know that some students this is important to say some students they have a lot of experiences uh, back home. Yeah, in my case, for example, I didn't have uh, many years of experience because I graduated, it's been a year, so I worked in Brazil for uh, a year. Oh, wow, and then I continued my uh, professional experience in Canada. Mm-hmm. So I know that some uh, many students they have. Um, a lot of experience um, back home. Right. So for those students, I would say that 
entry level positions where you learned, as I mentioned, the workplace, mm-hmm. how everything works in Canada. It's um, maybe it's not what you have in mind forever in your life, but yeah. it's something that will help you to build your confidence in Canada. Right. Maybe right. improve your English. Maybe right. uh, learn how to in marketing, for example, how to write content in English. So when you are in an entry level position, you have more space to change your career or to learn new things. Or it it's good. It's more flexible for you. So I would say that starting entry level positions. Great. Right. So I think those three were really important ones for the ones, you know, probably for a lot of our listeners who are international students or who come here as new immigrants. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of international talks, a lot of experiences being shared here. <laughs> so that was an awesome talk with Thank you, Maria. You, Chico, Thanks for, for joining us today. Thank you. And please, if you want to connect with us on LinkedIn, we are there. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I think we would look forward to connect to you and we'll come back and there'll be more coming up from Maria and our marketing coordinator, Diana. So, yes, in the Spanish version. <laughs> we'll be looking forward to that. Thanks, everyone. And thanks a ton, Maria. Thank you.